I want to leave aside alternative energy investing for just a second because of what we're seeing today. I just have to take a step back and ask for your impression of what we're seeing. I just pointed out that energy stocks as collectively are actually the worst performers today after being the best performers on the year. How are you feeling watching this sell off? What are you hearing from clients right now? Well, I think it's important to put today's move in context. Last week, energy was the best performing sector in the market, but it was down 84 basis points. I mean, the S&P 500 was down 5% last week. So you had, especially on Friday, acute selling across the board in the, the sector space, all 11 gig sectors down. But energy, like you said, up depending on what the current tick is around 52% this year with the S&P 500 coming into the week, 18%. So you're talking about a near 70% relative outperformance year to date. It was the best performing sector last year, up around 50%. And so the the recent performance of energy has really been the exception to what we've seen over the course of the past decade. Energy was the worst performing sector in the bulk of the past 10 years from a sector perspective, the, the most common worst performing sector. And, and part of that is just the nature of the market energy, at least over the course of the past couple of years, has sort of turned into a value sector, at least in terms of valuation. And that wasn't what was working for the past five years or so. It certainly wasn't what was working in 2019 and 2020 it, during the COVID crisis. And so in some ways, this is the market normalizing in terms of relative sector weightings. Back in the fall of 2020, energy was just around 2% of the S&P 500 by weight. And thanks to that strong relative performance, it's now almost 5% of the S&P 500. And historically, when energy's weight falls in the S&P 500 like it's done, you tend to get some reversion in that relative weighting in the market. And investors who are overweight tech and maybe underweight energy investors who use an ESG framework, for example, and have avoided energy, use exclusionary ESG strategies that don't include fossil fuel companies, perhaps came into the year significantly underweight energy, even though it was such a small weight in the portfolio. And so I think what investors are trying to grapple with is this idea that right now, in, in the real time, energy is the best performing sector in the market by a wide margin. The fundamentals of energy companies are about as strong as they've ever been. The, the valuation of energy is the second cheapest, at least on a trailing PE basis. It's the cheapest on a forward basis. And so you're sort of grappling with these two dynamics where historically in market environments like this, you might want to get defensive. More recently, the, the more cyclical growth-oriented sectors have outperformed energy. And yet here we are in the here and now in an inflationary environment with the BCOM up 35% and energy prices, as you mentioned, up significantly year to date. And yet you're trying to decide if you want to have energy exposure in the portfolio at yeah market weight or overweight. Paul, uh, when we get hit with this recession, should we get hit with it? How further lower will oil stocks go? Well, I think there's a challenge because on the one hand, demand destruction is, is likely to occur when you see energy prices as high as they are. And if we do tip into a recession, that's likely to put further pressure on consumption and demand for travel, demand for gasoline. And so in theory, that could put downward pressure on energy prices and therefore energy stocks, because typically energy stocks do move with the price of energy, specifically crude oil and natural gas. But the flip side of that is that supply for various forms of energy, whether it's crude oil, natural gas, natural gas liquids and the like, are very much constrained, not just domestically, because production isn't where it was pre-pandemic and rig counts still haven't come up to where they were pre-pandemic. Globally, we're seeing significant supply constraints, not just as a result of the Russian invasion of the Ukraine. It was a very tight market before then. So I think investors have to try and determine just how significant the supply side constraints are and whether or not a decline in demand as a result of recessionary environment is enough to overwhelm that supply side pressure. So yes, energy stocks certainly tend to, at least they have historically, move with the price of energy. But the flip side is, is that unlike periods in the past, it's not as if energy companies have been on this big spending binge. I mean, they've been very disciplined in their CapEx. CapEx as a percentage of sales is about as low as it's been in 20 years. You've got free cash flow yields on the sector that are the highest in the market. Valuations, like I mentioned, still below historical averages, still at a discount to the market in terms of trailing forward PEs. And so it's not as if these companies, based on the rally, have gotten 
extremely overvalued or potentially overvalued based on their price to earnings, price to book, price to sales ratios. Right. And it's not as if fundamentally they're in places where they've been in past cycles where energy prices were high. President Biden last week we heard is going to be potentially scheduling a trip to Saudi Arabia. What do you believe could come on that front uh, that the energy markets would be paying close attention to and especially consumers right now who are monitoring high energy prices that they're seeing companies even that are having to navigate through this environment? Yeah, I think the one of the positive outcomes, at least for consumers and the price of energy broadly, would be Saudi Arabia agreeing to some meaningful production increase or at the very least agreeing to go to their counterparts in OPEC and or OPEC plus and, and try and push them to, to increase production. But at the same time, it's not necessarily in the Saudi's best interest to, to see energy prices come down significantly from here, of course, as they're one of the major producers in, in the world. And, you know, the swing producer over the course of the past decade has become the United States. And the reality is, is that there's no simple fix going to Saudi Arabia, asking them to increase production isn't going to solve all of the world's problems as it relates to energy. The United States all of a sudden turning on production isn't all of a sudden going to fix energy prices because the reality is, is there's no switch to flip as it relates to production in the United States. I mean, these the, the production in the United States, largely fracking, is also constrained by supply side dynamics, specifically the supply of sand, for example. You hear companies complaining about the fact that they can't get enough sand to operate their various drilling facilities in some of the basins across the United States. And so in some ways, you're in a very difficult position from a supply and demand dynamic from energy. And there's no near-term fix. There are people, research, folks out there who believe that we're going to get to a better place from a supply and demand perspective, perhaps towards the end of the year, early 2023. But in the meantime, there's likely to be upward pressure on prices, or at the very least, a floor underneath crude oil and natural gas prices. And that's a, the forgotten piece of all of this is natural gas, right? Mm -hmm. People in the summer need to cool their homes. People need to turn on the lights. And natural gas is the dominant generator of electricity in this country. And if we're going to have more electric vehicles, to your point earlier about alternative energy and the energy transition, I mean, we're going to need more electricity. And the most reliable, abundant, cheap form that we have right now in the United States is certainly natural gas, although wind and solar are certainly growing their share.